Breaking news from outer space Truth and fiction, same embrace Lance and Gina lead the way Decoding myths from day to day Ever get that like little wave of nostalgia? You know, when you're looking at an old CD? Yeah. Like some classic album from your teenage years or maybe even just some like ancient piece of software. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you kind of think to yourself, well, hey, at least this thing, this physical thing, it'll last. Right, right. But uh, it turns out that might be a little too optimistic. Mm. We, uh, we've come across some information that suggests those shiny disks, the ones we thought would be around forever, well, they could be facing, a, a, let's just say, a pretty dramatic and honestly kind of unbelievable end. Yeah, it is a bit of a shocker. If you're anything like me or probably a lot of our listeners, you've still got boxes, maybe even shelves full of CDs. And what we're going to dive into today might make you want to uh, rethink that storage strategy. Yeah, definitely. Today on The Deep Dive, we're tackling a prediction that really raised our eyebrows. It kind of combines what we know about the material science of CDs, how they're made and all that with some, well, some very specific research findings. It's, uh, it's a lot to unpack. It is. But uh, that's what we're here for, right? We've been digging into what makes a CD tick, looking at everything from the physical layers to how it stores all that music or data. And of course, we've got this rather startling claim about its, uh, well, about its potential demise. Mm. So our goal today is to really try to understand why this is supposedly happening, you know, the physics behind it, and even, uh, even consider what it could mean for us, for our health. Right. So uh, maybe a good place to start would be just to break down the basics. When we hold a CD in our hand, what are we actually looking at? So a standard CD, the kind most of us are familiar with, is about 120 millimeters across, weighs about 15 grams, give or take. Okay. And it's mainly made of uh, this type of plastic called polycarbonate. That's the bulk of the disc. Then you've got the shiny side, right? That's a very thin layer of reflective metal, usually aluminum. Sometimes they use silver or even gold, but aluminum is the most common. Right. And that layer is super important because that's what the laser in your CD player actually reads. So it's bouncing off that metal layer, basically. Sticks in okay, and then there's the top part, the side of the artwork or the label. Right. That's not where the data is actually stored, though, is it? No, not at all. You see, on top of that reflective metal layer, there's a protective coating, like a thin lacquer. It's designed to shield the metal from... Scratches, dust, you know, all that stuff that could mess things up. Makes sense. And then, yeah, on top of that, you have the printed label, but the actual information, whether it's music or data, it's all encoded in that polycarbonate plastic itself. Oh, so it's in the plastic, not the shiny part. That's right. It's in those tiny little bumps and flat bits you can sometimes see if you tilt the CD in the light. Huh. Interesting. So how does that, like, how does that actually work? How do those bumps and flat bits translate into music or data? Okay, so picture this. During manufacturing, they create this master disc. Mm -hmm. And this master disc has these incredibly tiny indentations. We call them pits. And the flat areas between the pits, those are called lands. Pits and lands, okay. Yeah. And get this. These pits and lands, they're arranged in a single spiral track. Starts near the center of the CD and goes all the way out to the edge. Oh, wow. If you were to, like, unravel this track, it would be kilometers long. No way. Seriously. It's mind-blowing how much information they pack onto these things. Anyway, the length and the transitions between those pits and lands, they represent binary code. The zeros and ones. Exactly. And that's the digital information. So when your CD player shines a laser onto that spiral, the way the light bounces back from the pits and lands, that's how it reads the data. So it's like a code based on light reflections. That's really cool. It is pretty amazing. So we've got this polycarbonate disc, this spiral of microscopic pits and lands, all covered by reflective metal and a protective layer. Right. And this is where things, uh, well, this is where things start to get a little strange. Yeah. We came across this, uh, this document, let's call it. It was labeled pasted text. Hmm. And it makes a pretty, uh, well, a pretty dramatic claim about the lifespan of these, these seemingly stable objects. It does. And uh, it's not good news for anyone with a CD collection. No, not really. So what does it say exactly? Well, it states, and I quote, that all CDs manufactured 25 years ago or earlier will undergo irreversible atomic dissolution on May 25th, 2025. Whoa, hold on. Did you say May 25th, 2025? That's what it says. A very specific date. 
and uh, a very alarming prediction. That's putting it mildly. I mean, we're talking about a whole lot of CDs here, entire music collections, archives, libraries, personal collections. It's uh, it's a lot to process. So what's the supposed science behind this, this CD doomsday scenario? What's causing it? Okay, so the pasted text, it proposes a pretty complex and got to say a pretty unconventional mechanism for all this. Okay. According to the document, the main culprit is what they call a time-delayed molecular disintegration of the polycarbonate material. The polycarbonate, that's the plastic, right? Exactly. So the idea is that the chemical bonds within the plastic itself, they're inherently unstable. And they're, well, they're almost programmed to break down after a certain amount of time like a chain reaction waiting to happen. Okay, so the very material the CD is made of is uh, is basically self-destructing. But why 25 years specifically? And why such a sudden disintegration? That's where things get even more, uh, well, let's just say interesting. The pasted text, it claims that this breakdown, it's triggered by a specific type of quantum mechanical resonance. Quantum mechanical resonance. That sounds pretty uh, That sounds pretty high level. It is. Basically, think of it like a very specific frequency. And this frequency, it can cause an object to vibrate so intensely that it, well, it breaks apart. Like how a singer can shatter a glass with their voice. Yeah, kind of like that, but on a molecular level. And according to the source, it kicks in after exactly 25 years. Okay, so it's not just wear and tear or environmental factors. It's like something built into the material itself waiting for this trigger point. That's the claim, yeah. Wow. But it doesn't stop there, mm -hmm. right? There's also this connection to something happening in space. You remember incorrectly, the pasted text, it goes on to say that there's going to be a very specific planetary alignment on, you guessed it, May 25th, 2025. Of course. And this alignment, it's supposed to cause a huge increase in cosmic radiation hitting the Earth. They're very specific about this, saying it's not just the regular background radiation we experience every day. It's a surge of a particular type of radiation that's going to interact with well, you guessed it, the molecular structure of these older CDs, hmm. the ones that have already hit that 25-year mark. So the planetary alignment is like the uh, the final straw, like it provides the energy to set off this whole disintegration process. Exactly. The pasted text suggests that this cosmic radiation acts as the catalyst, like the thing that finally kicks off that chain reaction of bond breaking in the polycarbonate. It's just like poof, yeah. the CD just disintegrates. Well, according to the document, they claim they've done laboratory experiments. And in these experiments, they exposed old CDs to radiation that mimics this cosmic event. Mm -hmm. And supposedly, the disks turned into fine dust, just like their basic elements, carbon, hydrogen, trace metals, all within seconds. Turning to dust in seconds. That's uh, that's pretty hard to wrap my head around. It is, but hey, we're just reporting what the source says. Right, of course. Now, the pasted text, it does mention a potential solution, right? Something about a theoretical element. Yeah, they call it diamatium, purely hypothetical, but the claim is that if this diamatium were somehow incorporated into the manufacturing process, it could, uh, it could potentially neutralize this instability in the plastic. Okay, so how would this diamatium work? Like, what would it actually do to the plastic? The pasted text says that diamatium has a very unique crystalline structure. Hmm. And this structure is able to stabilize the molecular vibrations in the polycarbonate. So if you were to embed like diamatium atoms or ions within the polymer chains, it would create a much stronger material, a material that would be resistant to this cosmic radiation resonance. Basically, it would prevent the whole disintegration thing from happening. So why isn't this diamatium being used? It sounds like a miracle solution. Well, there's a pretty big catch. As the pasted text itself points out, diamatium is, at this point, completely theoretical. It was only... Uh, well, it was only theorized very recently. It definitely didn't exist back in the 80s and 90s when most CDs were being produced. And as the pasted text so eloquently puts it, time travel isn't an option. So, yeah, no diamation for our existing CD collections. So we're stuck with this potential CD apocalypse. Seems like it. And this brings up another point that the pasted text really emphasizes, the potential health risks. Right. If all these CDs are turning to dust, what does that mean for us? Are we going to be breathing in CD dust? Exactly. That's what they're concerned about. So what does the pasted text say about that? What are the potential health risks? Well, they focus on the aluminum from the reflective layer. And apparently there have been studies that link inhaled aluminum nanoparticles to, uh, to neurotoxic effects, which, if you think about it, is pretty concerning. If we've got millions of CDs potentially disintegrating and releasing this stuff into the air. Definitely not something you want to be inhaling. So mm -hmm. 
Is it just the aluminum we need to work about? What about the plastic itself and, you know, any other materials in the CD? Right. So in addition to the aluminum, they also talk about the polycarbonate plastic itself breaking down into fine particles and, of course, any other trace metals that might be present. Then they say that breathing in this stuff could lead to lung irritation, maybe even allergic reactions. Basically, imagine a cloud of microscopic plastic and metal particles. Not a good scenario. Not at all. So given all this... What does the paste to text recommend? What are we supposed to do? Okay, so they recommend a few things. First, they suggest storing your CDs in airtight containers. That way, if they do disintegrate, at least the particles will be contained. But they also suggest something a little more drastic. They say that we should maybe consider just getting rid of our older CDs altogether, like just to completely eliminate the risk. Wow. That's a pretty big step. It is. But I guess it makes sense if we're talking about potential health hazards. Right. And then for those of us who can't bear to part with our collections, they recommend protective measures like masks and air filters, especially in rooms where we store a lot of older CDs. That sounds pretty extreme, but, you know, if this prediction is accurate, it makes sense to be cautious. I agree. Now, beyond the health risks, it seems like the most practical advice is really about preserving the content itself. Right. You know, digitizing everything before it's too late. Exactly. So what does the paste to text say about that? Well, they're very clear that this decay is supposedly unavoidable for CDs manufactured 25 years ago or earlier. Hmm. So their biggest piece of advice is to digitize anything valuable, any music, any data as quickly as possible hmm. and transfer it to, you know, more modern storage media. So hard drives, cloud storage, that kind of thing. Exactly. Don't race against time. It is. So they're basically saying if you've got CDs that are 25 years old or older, you've got until May 25th, 2025 to back them up if you want to save what's on them. That's the gist of it. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty wild scenario. It is. So to recap, we've talked about the basic structure of a CD, this pretty shocking prediction of imminent atomic dissolution, this whole idea of time delayed molecular disintegration the planetary alignment and cosmic radiation, this theoretical element called diamatium, and of course the potential health hazards of CD dust. It's a lot to take in. It is. And it really makes you think, doesn't it? Like, how do we view physical media now? Mm -hmm. You know, we often like the fact that we can hold a CD in our hand. It feels real tangible. Right. But this scenario, it really highlights just how fragile these things actually are. And then on the other hand, we've got digital files. They may not feel as real as permanent, but maybe... In the long run, they're actually more stable, mm -hmm. as long as we're smart about backups and all that. That's something to think about. It really is. It makes you wonder about the future of our entire digital world, doesn't it? Definitely food for thought. Definitely. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another Deep Dive. See you next time. Breaking news from outer space. Truth and fiction, same embrace. Lance and Gina lead the way. Decoding myths from day to day. Sock Skynet News. Bold and bright. It's a cutting edge, but... Gaps with mystery Aliens lurking planets align False truths wrapped in cosmic signs Astrophysics, UFOs Gaps with mystery AG from the cosmos to your screen Everything
theory so unseen 